Hi and welcome to this new tutorial series where I will be showing you how to make a 2D action RPG in Godot 4. I'm currently making this tutorial in Godot 4 beta 10, but I will try to update any changes that might occur if or when new releases come out while I'm working on this series. In this first episode, we will set up a new project, create the player scene and test our new scene. Please remember that this is in no way the only way to create an action RPG in Godot. In most cases, there will be several ways to implement a new feature. This is how I would do it. But I also try to reflect on the choices we make during the series, why we make them and what alternatives we could have explored further. And now let's get started. We will start by creating a new project in Godot 4 Beta 10. If you haven't already downloaded Godot 4, I will leave a link in the description to where you can find it. I'm calling this new project ARPG Godot 4 Beta 10 Tutorial, but you know, feel free to call it something simpler if you like. For the project path, I just select the folder where I usually keep most of my game dev projects. You can then press create folder next to the project name and Godot will then create a new folder for our project in the project path we selected. We now have three renderers to choose from. Forward Plus, Mobile and Compatibility. I will be using really simple pixel art for this project and I don't really plan to use any advanced graphics features, at least not yet. So for now, let's just select the Compatibility renderer. We should be able to change this later if we like. In case you're really new to Godot, here is a quick tour of what you see on the screen. In the middle of the top, you find what I call the view menu. Here you can change between what should be shown in the big center part of the screen. The default view when you start a new project like we just did is the 3D view. The two views we will be using in this tutorial is the 2D view and the script view. On the right side of the screen, we have the inspector menu and right next to where it says inspector is a tab for the note menu. At the top left of the screen is the scene menu and below it is the file system menu. I will be referring to each of these menus often during this tutorial to make it easier for you to know where to find the things we are working on. If you haven't already done so, now is the time to select the 2D view from the view menu. And now it's time to create our player. In Godot, we don't just use scenes for our actual game scenes or levels. We can also create the objects that occur in our game as their own scenes. This can make it easier to create and test each individual object. When creating our player, we then start by making a scene for it. Because the player is the first thing we're working on, we can just make the currently open scene our player scene. We now need to define what the root node of our player scene should be. We want the player to be a physics body so we can move it around while detecting collisions easily later on. To create a physics body node, we click other node in the scene menu, search for character and then create a new character body 2D node. Godot actually has several types of physics body 2Ds to choose from. Character body 2D is the one we usually choose for our player when we want to control the movement ourselves from a script. I will leave a link to the physics introduction in the latest Godot documentation in the description below in case you want to know more about the different types of physics bodies. To the right of the character body 2D node we just created is a yellow warning triangle. This tells us that this node is missing something before it will work properly. For this type of node, this has to do with collisions, which we will come back to in a later tutorial in this series. So for now we'll just ignore the warning. It is generally a good idea to rename the root node of a scene. This name is also the default name that the scene will get when we instance it into another scene later on. To rename it, I right click on the node, select rename and I'll just call mine player. And now it's time for us to save our new player scene. We can do this using Ctrl or Command plus S as usual. I create a new folder for our player by pressing the create folder 
button at the top right of the menu and then I just hit save to save the player scene in the new folder. Now if we look down in the file system menu, we can see that our new folder has been created and our player scene is saved with the TSCN extension. Before we start moving or animating the player, we need to add a sprite to it so we can actually see it on the screen. To do this, we want to add a sprite 2D node to our player root. Right click on the player root, select add child node and search for sprite and then create a new sprite 2D node. We then click on the new sprite 2D node and look at the inspector menu in the right side of the screen. The sprite 2D node has a texture property that is currently empty. To create our sprite, we need a texture with the art we want to use for our player. For this tutorial, I will be using this Ninja Adventure Asset Pack from Pixelboy and AAA. This asset pack includes both tile sets, animated characters and monsters, sound effects, music, and really everything we need to start learning how to make an action RPG in Godot. You can find these assets on itch.io and I will of course leave a link to the asset pack down in the description below. I then create a new folder in our Godot project for our art by right clicking on the rest folder in the file system menu and then choose new folder. We can now add art to our project by clicking and dragging the art into this folder. For our player I will be using the green ninja sprite which can be found if we go down the actor folder, then characters and then green ninja. For convenience I will rename the sprite sheet to player sprites and then I'll click and drag it into the new art folder we just made in Godot. Now we just need to add our new sprite sheet to our sprite node. We go down to the file system menu and locate our sprite sheet. Make sure that the sprite 2D node is selected and click and drag the sprite sheet into the empty texture property in the inspector menu. We can zoom in on the view in the middle of the screen by using the top left zoom tools. If we zoom in now, we can see that the whole sprite sheet has been added as our player sprite. You might also notice that the pixel art looks really blurry at the moment. This is caused by the default filter that's being applied to new textures. We can change the filter directly on the sprite, but since all the art on our player is going to be pixel art, it might be better to just change the filter settings on the player root node instead. Then all child nodes will inherit these filter settings unless we manually change them later on. To change the filter settings on our player root, we select the root node, then we go down to the canvas item settings in the inspector menu, we find where it says texture, and then we can see that currently the filter settings is set to inherit, but we want to change this to nearest. The nearest filter is what we generally use when we work with pixel art. And now we just need to divide our sprite sheet into frames and select the one we want to start with. To do this we select the sprite to denote and find the animation settings in the inspector menu. Here we can specify how many columns and rows of sprites or frames is in our sprite sheet. The green ninja sprite sheet I'm using has 4 columns and 7 rows of frames. So we input this in the H frames and V frames properties. And now our sprite is ready. If we want to use another frame, we can select it using the frames properties or the frame chords properties. And now I think it's time we test our player scene for the first time. To test just the current scene we're in, we can use the run current scene button in the top right corner of the screen. However, when we play the current scene, we can't really see anything except a large grey area and we can't see the player anywhere. Or actually we can, it's just really really tiny and centered at the top left corner of the screen. This is because we haven't defined what the size of our viewport should be. To set the size of the viewport, we go to the project settings, then we locate the display settings to the left and select the window menu. Here we can set the width and the height we want for our viewport. This will be the size of our game screen in pixels. If we run the current scene now, the screen will be really really tiny and when we rescale the window size manually, 
our game will not scale with it. To fix this, we need to change the stretch properties for our window. To change the stretch settings, we go back into the window settings and down the bottom you'll find the stretch settings. We change the stretch mode to canvas items and the aspect to keep. For some pixel art games, the stretch mode viewport might be a better choice, but for this game, the viewport mode could make the movements look not as smooth as we want to. But you could experiment with this later on if you like. If we test our current scene again, we can now see that the game size is what we set the viewport size to be, and this size is kept no matter how we resize the window. The last thing we want to change now is what the size of the window should be when we play our scene. So we go back into the window settings and set the window override width and height to what we want the window size to be when we play our scene. And now we can see that everything works as we want it to. The player is still centered at the top left corner of the screen, but we will fix that later. And that's all for this episode. Next time we'll be looking at how we can move and animate the player. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like this later on, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. That's all for now. Bye!